Welcome back to my Frowman Gage LTC, here's Chapter 7. First, as a quick disclaimer, I had to redo Chapter 6 in order to get better ore for my dog, and because of how the RNG played out, Alfred and Yaka have a bit less XP than they did at the end of the Chapter 6 video, but it doesn't really matter. As for the chapter itself, it is truly awful for LTC. All that's really going on is that Yunaka will warp Ragnarok in and bait Hortensia forward, with Louie and Chloe then taking out her two health bars. Everyone else just sits back helping Alir farm heal XP. In fact, if you warp Ragnarok in on turn 1, you can actually beat this map in 2 turns instead of the 3 turn that I'm going for. However, there's a couple issues with this. The first is that the reliability is awful. This can actually be alleviated by giving Yunaka a second dagger with the Sigurd engraved. The issue with this is that she needs both the Sigurd dagger and the Marth dagger forged up to plus 2, and while I can technically afford this, I need a pretty big forge for chapter 13, and the 80 iron required to forge 2 plus 2 iron daggers is not insignificant. I have to rig for enough silver after all, the last thing I want to do is to rig them even more. Even then, her survivability with the Sigurd engrave is still pretty bad, and the Makai engrave is out of the question, as the forges would be way too expensive to make up for the minus 3 might. The second issue is that with one less turn, Chloe reaching level 10 for chapter 8 becomes too difficult, meaning that it would then become a 2 turn. However, that does give me a way to make up for the turn loss here, as if I can get Chloe enough Mercurius XP here, I can make up for the turn loss by one turning the next chapter. At least, that's what I would like to say, but after looking at it again, by going for a greedier chapter 2 and more optimized XP in chapter 4, along with the chapter 5 addendum, you can actually still get Chloe to level 10 while 2 turning this map. The consequences of doing so mean that you basically need perfect silver drops, so at the end of the day, I'm not too upset about this, but if you want to save a turn over this run, you can go with that. Although, in my opinion, it's way easier to just go for a 2 turn in chapter 4 instead. That being said, I'll be posting an addendum for this chapter, like I did with chapter 5, to show what the 2 turn would look like, along with how going for that 2 turn impacts chapters 8 through 10, as you end up losing a lot of reliability in those chapters to make up for Alir getting less XP in this chapter, which is another reason I'm not too upset about missing this. Anyway, back to the actual clear. We set up our units so that Alir can heal at least three of them on the first two turns, and even set up a cheeky enemy face kill with Chip from Louie and Fram chain guarding him to prevent him from getting broken by the Lance Fighter. Chloe was also positioned in such a way to get three enemy face kills on the previous turn, while receiving Alir personal to help reach the one round threshold. We also had to block off Citrine to prevent the Sword Flyer from going for her over Chloe, and we also had to provide Lapis with fortified defense to make sure Chloe was the juicier target. On this turn, she'll be taking out the two Axe Calves. In order to one-round this first cav, I actually had to give Mercurius the Might Augment. She then gets a level up that boosts her strength, making the Augment unnecessary for the second cav. Oh well, not like I need the Might Augment on something else anyway. Finally, Hortensia moves in and, with the Monk preventing her from using All for One, we're able to still get a counterattack in, although it isn't really necessary for the 3 turn. In fact, the only attacks from Yunaka and the strat that actually matter are the ones on the Monk to clear the way to Hortensia. After Louie once again gets a Killer Lance crit on the first try, all that's left for us to set up a big great sacrifice for Alir before Koi finishes off the second health bar.
My will is firm. Chloe hits level 10 without a single point of XP to spare, and that's going to be chapter 7 completed in 3 turns. <laughs>